So this week, we're talking about brothers being forgiven or restored to one another. It's Jacob and Esau. Today, on God Theology. So I thought about, you know, this portion we're reading and... You know, I was about this close from having the old Gotha come in and talk about, you know, wrestling with God. But the more I thought about it, the more that's not what I wanted to talk about this week. I thought I'd take it maybe a little bit of, of a different route. Don't get me wrong, you know, I will talk about wrestling with God a little bit. But you see, this passage opens up. You know, when Jacob is going back to be reconciled to his brother Esau. And Jacob sends a servant to, you know, to Esau. The servant comes back and he's like, Yeah, Esau's coming with you, to you with 400 men. Now we know Jacob had servants. What we don't know for sure was what kind of men Esau were, were bringing. Could this have been an army? Maybe. But whatever it was, you know, it freaked Jacob out just a little bit. That Jacob prayed. And he prayed, you know, God, you told me to do this. You told me to be restored to my brother and you're going to make me, you know, a great nation. A uh, little help here, please. And if you want my honest opinion, with that prayer, I think that is where the wrestling with God begins. Yeah, it happens a little bit later in the story, but with that prayer. Because really, how many of us have been there? We're like, uh, God, you promised this, and yeah, a little help here. God, if you want me to go on this mission trip, you know, you're going to have to open the door. You know, a little help here. How many of us have wrestled with God in that aspect? I know I have. So, Mrs. is freaking out, if you will. Jacob does something. He sends... Esau gifts to try to appease his anger. And I think that's mentioned in one of the Proverbs. You know, that of quiet gift, you know, uh, stills anger. But he sends donkeys. He sends camels. I think he sends cattle, you know, as well. You know what he doesn't send? The sheep. Now I could you know, say, well, maybe Jacob, you know, cared about the sheep because they were outcast. I could also say that, well, because they were, you know, outcasts, that's why he didn't send them because he wanted to send Esau his best. You know, he wanted to show Esau that look, I'm a changed man. You know, the past is in the past. You know, I want to make things right by you. And I don't know if the gifts he sent were comparable to the uh, blessing that he, the blessing that he stole, you know, or the birthright that he, you know, stole. But I think he was trying to make up for that, make restitution. And I use the air quotes for still because I think Jacob, you know, deserved both those blessings. That, you know, it says, you know, from the very beginning of the story, you know, the older shall serve the younger. 
And I think the Blessings should have been Jacob's in the first place. That's just my thoughts on it. So, they cross the river and here we get Jacob wrestling with God. Or a man we think is God. You know, and something kind of happens I think is kind of cool. God changes Israel's, Jacob's name to Israel. You know, because you have wrestled with God and man and, you know, have shown yourself to be strong. You see, even this angel, or this man we think is God, Recognize that Jacob has changed. He's no longer the deceiver, the, the supplanter. You know? He has changed. For the better, if you will. So, you know, Jacob and Esau meet up, and Esau's like, dude, what's with all the stuff you sent? You know? Jacob's like, you know, I thought you still might be mad, and I wanted to, uh, you know, calm you down. And they get in this little squabble, you know, Esau's like, keep it. And Jacob's like, no, it was a gift, you keep it. Esau's like, I got enough, you keep it, you know. Brothers squabble, you know, like that once in a while. But because those two of them had so much stuff, we found out a little bit later... Like Abraham and Lot, you know, they kind of separated. Now, there's also the story of Dinah in here. I really don't want to cover that for this, this time around, but maybe next time. I just wanted, you know, because I've been there. You know, there was somebody I seriously offended my, or probably around my sophomore year in high school. You know, that I didn't get a chance to apologize, you know, see forgiveness or whatnot for restitution. You know, until recently. Okay, or I say recently, maybe like five, six years ago. You know, my brother, you know, we butted heads a lot in high school. And now we've become, you know, good friends. And Jacob and Esau, this has been 21 years. Let that sink in, I mean... 21 years that they were possibly fighting or disagreeing with one another. 21 years of Jacob thinking Esau's still mad at him. 21 years of Esau waiting for Jacob to come back. Folks, if it is up to you, do not let your feuds or, you know, unforgiveness or, do not wait 21 years to seek that, that forgiveness for those feuds, you know, or that, you know, or seek restitution. I mean... Did God have a will, or was this in God's timing? Yeah. But, I don't think, you know, this is applicable for everybody to wait 21 years. So, another thing was, Jacob wasn't wrong. 
at least in my opinion, but Esau perceived Jacob to be wrong. So Jacob makes restitution for his perceived wrongness. And sometimes if we want to make restitution or mend a relationship, we may have to swallow our pride. Be like, look, I don't think I'm wrong in this, but I'm willing to get past it. I'm willing to work through it. I'm willing to be your friend, you know, or brother, even though I don't think I'm wrong. Anyway, that's about all. This passage ends with the lineage of, or of not lineage, well, maybe lineage, but it you know, ends with uh, Esau's kids and his kids' kids and his future gene his genealogy. But I'll hopefully talk to you guys next week. Peace.